This is for the players. I'm Ryan Betson. I'm Josh Saunders. And this is for the players, the pop culturist PlayStation podcast. With over 40 years of playing PlayStation, over five years in the gamers media combined, we thought we'd throw our hat into the ring and join that PlayStation conversation. If you would also like to join the PlayStation conversation, you can do so every Monday morning at 9am Australian Eastern Standard Time on YouTube, iTunes and other podcast services. How do you join that conversation? I'm glad you asked. Simply head over to www.thepopculturist.com slash questions. Give us your questions, topics and suggestions for the show. What's that? A week between talking PlayStation is too long? Don't worry, Billy, we got you covered. Join us on Facebook, join us on Discord, join us on Patreon. Join us and let's be friends. All those links in the video description below. Uh, we should address, address the fact that if you're watching the video, it's face in the middle here. Hey, this is Buddy. What up, Hi. Buddy? This is Buddy Watson from Review Culture. Buddy, buddy. How you going, guys? I'm good, man. Good, man. It's uh, great to uh, finally be here. And yeah. uh, all the way from sunny Queensland down to all yeah, the way in sunny Melbourne. <laughs> See, this De- is, this definitely is our uh, longest traveling guest. That's true. Now, it would be flattering if you traveled just to be on the I show, did but just, that's, not, that's uh, not the case. So. Yeah. So I did just come here for this. So this that's is that's what's really important. impressive is the fact that you're get, at time of recording, you are getting <laughs> married tomorrow. That's right. Yeah. And you're like, we're going to do the day, day before. I'm going to do a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the bride-to-be, she's uh, she's off getting a massage and doing all the things. I'm like, well, what am I going to do? Just sit at the hotel? He's like, well, you do whatever you want. I'm like, uh, so, uh, Ryan, Josh, uh... <laughs> I hear you guys record on yeah, the Yeah, that's, that's right. So um, come join this PlayStation conversation. <laughs> yeah. yeah you're, like, you've, you've, for some reason, so you're, you live in Brisbane. Yes. And then you decided to get married in Werribee. Yes. Grand to the Werribee Mansion. It's fucking mm. beautiful. Oh, it looks stunning. It's such a big effing trip. And uh, everyone is traveling to... Werribee as well. There's no one that lives in Melbourne that's coming to the wedding as well. <laughs> so, so I'm just forcing all my friends and family. I'm just to come. saying, there are people in Melbourne that can come to a wedding. I know. Well, we'll come know. MC that bit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just sorry, I give cards on all the dinner table, on all the dinner tables. <laughs> this wedding was sponsored by the Pop Culturists. Yes. No, pay- no payment. Actually, not a, not <laughs> no money actually changed. Yeah. So, so that's all. Uh, thanks to the power of time travel, um, this will drop on Mondays 9 a.m. Mm-hmm. So I know that my lovely bride to be will watch this. So mm-hmm. first of all, you're amazing. Uh, the wedding was great. I haven't seen any of it uh, <laughs> the, in the planning process. But everything went off beautifully. Uh, it didn't rain. You looked stunning. What's and, your uh, Kimberly. Kimberly. And Kimberly, I, you looked awesome. Yeah, and I can't. You know, I, I'm so glad this is the first day of the rest of my life. And I'm glad mm-hmm. father-in-law didn't get drunk and ruin it. That was. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. So Ryan. Yes. Other than what we played at EB Expo last week, yeah. what have you been playing? Uh, I haven't every time because I'm like, I remember. <laughs> uh, most I've been playing, uh, not a whole lot actually. A lot of Switch, which is a PlayStation show. We're going to fucking talk about Switch. Uh, beating the shit out of Stardew Valley the game and is Golf Story. So it doesn't matter. And Ooh. Golf Story, which okay. is Switch only at this point. Mm. Yeah, it's dope. It, like, it's, it's love it because like, we, we were at EB Expo and we found out like the day before we left that Stardew Valley will be dropping on the Friday uh, around like at midnight I'm like fuck we need to find some Wi-Fi like bad because we need this and then like we spent the whole weekend when we weren't at the Expo in the hotel room music playing Switch. Stardew Valley <clears throat> it's a great game I'm enjoying it too yeah you are like see this is what, what I love about this though See, buddy, as I'm sure you've known, we <laughs> I love farming games. Yes, of and course. Josh never understood it until oh my god, you get three it three days ago. Yes, how far into Stardew Valley are you? Uh, fall of year two. Year two. Oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's. <clears throat> it's not that I didn't get it it's that I never really wanted to give up my TV to be playing it yeah. mm-hmm. like if I was playing because I have Stardew Valley on the PlayStation I bought it when it came out I played it for like you know, two hours but I'm enjoying playing it handheld while also watching something mm, yeah. I watched Jurassic Park while playing Stardew last night like it's perfect yeah I felt like I oddly found a Jurassic Park loop last night too on, you? on YouTube did you yeah, yeah. all these fan theories and <laughs> yeah. shit what about Shadow of War how's that uh, and Shadow of War I've been playing as well we, I streamed the first two hours the other day whenever, whenever day was Tuesday Wednesday Wednesday whenever day was um, and I put about another 45 minutes into it this morning um, yeah look it's, it is more of the same parts of it look prettier parts of it look the same uh, the nemesis system is 
bigger and better it's really kind of cool so now i don't know now for life i don't remember where this is in the previous one or not but there are um what are they called like vengeance missions or something along like that yeah, so if someone kills you then they tell you exactly where they are on the map you just go and fuck them yeah, but they also get promoted though don't they yes like so same as the old emphasis system they get promoted mm. so they get a little bit more extra power but there is a certain mission that's only for a small period of time where you can go and get added loot if you take them out straight away so the if nemesis you- system for me is too much too much fucking awesome uh, too much big it's- fan the completionist in me I looked at the nemesis in me I was like uh uh-uh, uh I can't fall down this rabbit hole <laughs> I can't do it what about you buddy what have you been playing anything oh so should I also mention about, about the uh, nemesis system so one thing that we just discovered is that the captains now adapt to what you've done that was so, awesome so previously you were just like you're like oh, okay this guy has a shield I'm just gonna keep jumping over him and taking him out jump over and take him out and then halfway through the fight the guy's like I know what you're doing and he adapts to it so I can't jump over him anymore he goes Poof, and launches me off that's cool so it's like makes you kind of in the middle of a, of a heated battle rethink how you take on the person Wicked. so now I'm stuck because I have no arrows yeah. left I can't jump over him he has a big shield so I can't attack him from the front I don't actually know what to do well, time to never play that game again yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's generally what happens so uh, mm. yeah what about you that's pretty cool Oh, what we have I had played a great in the last week? We had a week? great time at EB Expo. EB Expo was awesome, so we played a bunch of games there. Yeah. Um, you guys have got some great videos up on YouTube about you know, the impressions and everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you, you got any content up? No, no, no. Okay. no. Um, so pimp, that, pimp that shit. Yeah, no, we're in a bit of a hiatus at the moment just because of all the wedding stuff. Um, oh, but yeah, uh, yeah, we're going to get back into it uh, once we go to PAX yeah. and everything. PAX but uh, awesome. I picked up Zelda Breath of the Wild again, finally. So I haven't okay. played it since, what, uh, May? I yeah. think my, my save file was. I've already put 60 hours into it. I haven't done any Divine Beasts or anything, but uh, I made a mission to, you know, do, that's my priority now. Next time I touch that game, I'm going to, like, start so making so actually do something. Into it. Yes, yeah. actually do something <laughs> instead of wandering around and uh, falling off cliffs because my stamina bar runs out. So, so you yeah. say again. So did you have it and then piss it off and then... Yeah, I have uh, I have the game. Then I stopped playing um, just because I wanted to get through Horizon. Oh, so you just picked it back yeah, up. Yeah, so. picked it back up. Yeah, okay. Um, I knew because I knew I was always going to have it. Usually, you you stop playing a game, you never come back to it. I always knew that you know mm. this game I'm going to come back to one hundred percent. So uh, yeah, I think that's going to be my December shit, game. 100%. Yeah. Get all nine hundred Korok seeds. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's right. Just to get that <laughs> lame reward, yeah, whatever it yeah, is. It's something like yeah, looking forward into Q4. Like October is fucking insane. Early November is insane. Late November and December is almost dead. Cool, good. Yeah, I'm looking forward uh, back mm. catalog. So I, I want to get back into Stardew Valley on on PS4. Um, I'm thinking about winter in year one. So oh, yeah. every, the release on the Switch has kind of hyped it back up again. Yeah. So I had a great time in winter. It was like a well, winter's boring. I had yeah. the best fun. No crops to worry about. <laughs> I'm just I got to the bottom of the yeah, mines. Yeah. I relayed out my farm how I wanted it for the next season. It was awesome. It's I good infrastructure for the rest of the it is. Year yeah, two. you set yourself so. up for the entire year. I'm basically a microbrewery in Stardew Valley. <laughs> <laughs> it's just fucking kegs everywhere. I'm making mead, I'm making wine, I'm making beer. I'm getting the town shit-faced. Is that literally all you've been playing? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, um, yesterday, no, day before yesterday, I played Stardew for a while and the Switch needed charging and I was like, fuck, because I don't want to play it on the TV. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm going to give Bloodborne another go. Okay. I got quite. I don't know how far I was in Bloodborne the last time I played it. I think I beat like three bosses or something. But I'm going to start again. I'm going to really kind of get stuck into it this time because I really like. I love the game without barely playing it just because the aesthetic and everything like that. Played for about half an hour, died, turn it off. <laughs> <laughs> just, I don't have the patience anymore. I don't know. Are you, are you going to jump on Dang and Romper? Yeah. Why? I was asking. I'm just curious because I'm like, cause well, I, I, I don't want to buy it. No, we don't have to buy it. It's on the no. Pop C account. Oh. You sure yeah. you didn't? Uh, no, we were given a cut. Download that one in your personal account. No, 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 no. that <laughs> one. You didn't pull Matterfall. Matterfall. That one, I promise, is okay. on Popsy account. All right. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't pay. Yeah, no, we've got. Uh, yeah, uh, I don't know if who hooked us up. Reboot hooked us up, I think. Yeah, yeah. nice, no, cool. And I need, it's, I need to get back into that too, do more, yeah. more of that. Cool. Yeah, that's it for me. That's all I'm playing. Pretty straightforward. Yeah. Easy done. That's when we head into. Now we've got that crap out of the way. We head into the news of the week, where we inform the players 
about that PlayStation news. So seeing as last week's episode was done from EB Expo, talking about EB Expo, we did miss a little bit of news that week before. A bit of catch up? A um, little bit of catch up, right? Only one, really. Uh, PlayStation President and Global CEO Andrew House is stepping down from his role with current Deputy President of Sony Interactive Entertainment, John Codera, taking his place effective immediately, as of like two weeks ago at this <laughs> point. Per the official announcement on Sony's website, House will remain with SIE as chairman for the year for the transitional purposes and stick with Sony as director and chairman of SIE. So he's not entirely leaving Sony, he's just not doing this yeah, one particular role. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's chilling out a bit. I mean, he's kind of done, like, what else is there for him to do in mm-hmm. the company? I mean, like, you look at Sony's dominance in the gaming market yeah. and it's like, you know, get out get out while you're ahead, yeah? Mm. Like, there's nothing better you can accomplish for Sony at the moment, so just get down. Imagine they put it on your resume. So it's like, oh, so uh, so you're a PlayStation. Like, yeah, I left when we had 70 million consoles in the wild. I'd imagine this guy... <laughs> <laughs> I imagine this guy would never have to send a resume ever again. Everyone no, knows who everyone he is. Knows Andrew yeah, he's the guy that uh, gets headhunted. <laughs> yeah. So from what I understand, uh, the guy taking over, John Codera, was... Uh, mostly in charge of digital services mm-hmm. up to this point. I think like PS Now and View and that kind of stuff. All the successful stuff. Yeah, and <laughs> I, I wouldn't want to... Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is his moment now. Yeah, like, he true. gets to do it's the his moment, house but role, the, so. the fucking the pressure, man. Yeah. I mean, because yeah. PlayStation's so far up, almost the only way to go is down mm. at this point so or put sorry just playing stay steady all, all the best to him for the future yeah look so i people sort of i think some people are speculating like what this means for playstation in terms of what like andrew house did have a lot of control he did have a, he did have a lot of influence but i don't know whether it'll be super transformative having no, this new guy not. come in but it could be as well it like, could be as well yeah. As I, as I don't think I don't think we're going to radically he's going to come in and be like Vita 2 <laughs> now that Andrew House is gone you know after last week when he made that comment he's like we don't need a Vita you know, you know what fuck you my name's John I don't need a Vita <laughs> now that the Vita haters are gone <laughs> after playing the Switch so much this yeah, last I need, week I, I can't touch the Vita I can't ever again. I don't even know where done. my Vita is it's just an infi- yours is just like on the couch it's literally on the couch I charged it I'm like I'm going to bring it to EBX bro I'm like Side of Valley I'm like fuck you <laughs> <laughs> the Vita here Vita what Vita <laughs> number two this one, I put in my, initially I put it in for Rhyme, then I'm like, oh, it's kind of for me too, because it's got to do with Stardew Valley. In a Reddit AMA, Eric Barone, sole creator of Stardew Valley, discussed his thoughts on his next project and how he's <coughs> learned from Stardew's development. Although he confirmed that he had plans for his next game in the AMA, Barone was initially hesitant to discuss future projects because, quote, creating hype too far in advance is a lot of pressure, and ultimately I don't think it benefits everyone. I prefer to work in an isolated bubble. But Barone said he is approaching his next project with a similar mindset to Stardew Valley, take a style of a game that was never fully realised, and carry out the tradition in my own weird way. That game won't be a Stardew sequel or expansion, but it will take place on the same planet. Barone intends to explore some of the lore that he fleshed out in his mind, but did not yet include in Stardew. Quote, with my next game, I want to go all out with my ideas, take things to the extreme, create an even richer, more detailed game world, and delight players with continuous handcrafted experience, he said. So, so ne- ne- nothing specific. Well, we know <laughs> he did confirm that his next game has to... The, well, from the screenshot, it's like a, a wizarding yeah, world. Because we yeah. know magic is in Stardew from the wizard and the Junimos and, like, there's all this weird shit that... Well, when I first found the wizard in Stardew, I was like, what the fuck is yeah, this? We're, 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 it's so we're grounded. Si- we're sitting in the hotel room, like, I'm doing crops and, and then you hear this, what the fuck? <laughs> like, what? It's like, there's a wizard with a pentagram on the floor. Yeah. What the fuck is this game? <laughs> so we know it'll be something that along the lines of, I think you said like a wizarding school kind mm. of thing. The fact that it takes place in the same universe is kind of like in the same world. Part of the cool. uh, SVEU. Yeah, yeah. Star- <laughs> Stardew Valley Entertainment Universe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but cool, man. Like this guy, look, I read, the, I read pretty much the whole AMA, which was like 2000 comments but i just kind of went through it and yeah he worked on stardew for the last five years all alone he did the music the he taught himself the animation the pixel art like fucking everything so i've never said this before i love this man i do too and he said he because someone asked you know do you want to expand your team and he's like no because that takes away my his vision vision, his control his focus like when you have Um, a team you can't yeah and he don't like he's with um Chucklefish and another company that does all the the ports and everything for him, but other than that, he's like, no, I'm alone. I'm, you know. So Wait, the next game might be four or five years uh-huh. away, but you know, th- he's fucking made it. Like mm. one guy has mm. made it. Exactly. What about awesome. you, buddy? Are you you keen for some wizardry school? Action? Absolutely keen. If it's anything like Stardew Valley with the intricate systems mm. and kind mm. of 
it's it's Stardew Valley is just so weird because it feels like a life. It's just a life simulator. Yeah. Like I'm on there trying to you know trying to hustle and get the money. My other <laughs> mate is he's you know he's focusing on the social game. So I got I, don't mar- I got married yesterday. In, oh in wow! Stardew, right, got my wife Abigail. That's oh. my babe. Oh babe! Yeah, yesterday I'm getting married tomorrow. Oh, nice oh, man. Oh, We're all married we, now. We just, had, oh. we just had a little quiet event. You know, didn't want to invite too many people. <laughs> <laughs> the farm's not doing so well at the moment. Didn't have a lot of money. Um, uh, bullshit! You sent me a screenshot of you selling. Fifty three thousand dollars worth of fucking crops. What? Just watermelons. <laughs> watermelon. That's my whole farm is watermelons. It's melons. Um, but I found. So last you sell night, melons and beer. Yeah, melons. Yeah, fruiters. Beer. Yeah, I sell melon beer. <laughs> <laughs> but I found I found that Abigail goes to bed at ten o'clock every night. Oh my god, Abigail's that's a, that's a girl love schedule. Chasing. It really? Yeah. yeah, she's awesome. She like yeah. plays music and video games and stuff. But I found one night it was like quarter to ten. And she wasn't home and I didn't know where she was. And I got a little bit worried. I'm like, where the <laughs> fuck is she? And then she comes home like half an hour later. I'm like, where the fuck were you? <laughs> <laughs> but I'm so attached to these characters. I'm like, where's my wife? Who's she with? Who's she talking to? Josh is getting divorced tomorrow. <laughs> <in Yeah. Minnesota. laughs> so. It's a life I've got two kids and now I've lost them. I've literally got a pumpkin patch with her name on it because I'm still I'm still trying to build up them. I'm still courting her. So yeah. uh, Just spell the crops yeah. into Abigail. Yeah. Just right, yeah. <laughs> Next bit of news. It has been announced via a tweet that Fortnite Battle Royale has amassed 10 million players just two weeks after release. From Fortnite's Twitter account, quote, In two weeks since we've launched, over 10 million of you have played Battle Royale. We can't say thank you enough. That's fucking insane. What happens when a game's free? Free, yeah. It can be attributed a lot to being free, but if it was shit, most people probably wouldn't have jumped on it. Yeah. It's doing really well. well. Notice how they haven't said like what the re- like how many active players there are, just how many people have downloaded yeah, it. How yeah, many people exactly. do actually do that? What, download free shit? No. What's fucking time? Announce we've got X amount of active players. No one does that. Yeah. If, does Naughty if, if Dog come out and say The Last can, of Us multiplayer if, currently has 100,000 active players? If you players. can brag about it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. If, if they can't brag about it, then no. Like, I'm, I'm not like this. I'm looking very pessimistic and cynical about yeah, you it. Are. Mr. But PUBG. Like, you know, uh, see, pu- that's a PUBG. They do the active player count because they're they like, have to, cause Steam, we can. They have to because mm. Steam displays it to that, the public. That's also true. But so like, don't give them points for displaying public counts when Steam make them make it public. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like there are times where people say like, this is how many active players we have on yeah, consoles. Yeah, they don't have to. But they don't, yeah, they don't have to. I'm just, I'm just saying. I think with this. It could be a, a good two million of those people that were like, oh, I'll check it out. There's butt. And so there's still 8 million players. Yeah, yeah shut up. No, I'm just, I'm making a point. Yeah. It's, impre- being, it's, it's, still in, it's still impressive. Why can't you just be thankful? It's very impressive. Congratulations, and I Epic Games, for just making be happy a fantastic for them. game. Yeah, they're like, I've got it. I played it twice. Well, but mind you, I did download it before we went away, so mm. yeah. I might play it. Have you now. touched it at all? Yeah, I downloaded. Um, I, I haven't played PUBG because I'm generally a console gamer, so I'm like, oh well, this is a good you know way for me to check this out to see if I actually want to ha- you know go to the effort of making a Steam account, checking mm. whether I have you know the laptop will run it and stuff, and and mm. get into this kind of phenomenon that's happening right now. Played it, liked it, enjoyed the concept. Uh, I think I played about five, six matches and then I just deleted it from the thing. I'm just like, yeah, um, you know, I've had so my, he, I've had my, he I've had my one of those people. But yeah. I see what they're doing here and you point to where they don't have to announce these numbers and it's more the active numbers. Mm. Stock, like it's kind of that, you know, stock sells stock on the shelf. Yeah. Whereas it's like, hey, look, our game is popular a lot of people are playing this and then people kind of jump onto that and that's get true on the roll, like if you so. say oh there's 10 million value like 10 million holy mm-hmm. shit i'm gonna pick that up it's like oh, world that, War- it works it's like world of warcraft still pitches they got like fifth you know 15 million players and they're down to like seven at this point but they had yeah. at one point 15 million players yeah. it's yeah. all the spin all the spin but congratulations no nah, fuck yeah that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's actually that. fantastic you literally are like you're taking on your competition like by the fucking horns and to restructure what they were yeah and to like People forget that there out. is a single player mode. In this <laughs> yeah, like game. Fortnite, the Fortnite game itself <laughs> is really yeah. cool. Like it is pretty cool. No, it is cool. Yeah. I played played the played a couple of hours of mm. a few weeks ago. It's, it's cool. It's fine. Horizon Zero Dawn Complete Edition will be released on the PS4 on December 5th for 50 US dollars, Sony announced. The Complete Edition of Guerrilla Games Action RPG will package together the base game and the Frozen Wilds expansion, according to PlayStation on Twitter. will also come with all digital deluxe edition content, which includes weapons, resource packs, a theme, digital art book. The studio Guerrilla Games has also announced that the Frozen Wilds will be Horizon's only expansion. That's awesome. Yeah. I, love, I love how they one named the expansion instead of DLC mm-hmm. good because that's what it, that's what it is like yep. DLC and expansions have very different meanings whether they're the same thing or not like in yeah, your head all downloadable content it is but. all downloadable but you know the, the Witcher D- 
DLC, like Blood and Wine and Hearts of Hearts of They're Stone. They're expansions. They are expansions. And they're referred to as expansions as yeah, well, yeah. because they are. And, you know, the Frozen Wilds too. And I love how they've just kind of gone, here's the game, here's a big expansion, and we're done. Like, that's it. it. It's, yeah, it's kind of like Last of Us. Milk like, it. We're not going to milk it dry. Here's Last of Us, he's left behind. Thanks. Exactly. We're heading out. Yep. We're moving we're on. Not going to milk it dry, you know. That's very good. Was, who knows if they're working on Horizon 2 I'd imagine they probably yeah. are now are they, uh, do you think Killzone will have like a triumphant return like in like five years I don't I think Killzone's shelved for the moment yeah, yeah. it's definitely shelved There's for enough, the moment because like, it, it, it came out of a time like it was as they as they refer to it the Halo killer mm. and Halo's fucking dead now so they don't yeah. need it <laughs> mission accomplished <laughs> like we Kill, win Killzone 2's multiplayer was amazing I don't know if you ever played it yeah but the multiplayer in Killzone 2 was so fucking like, I loved good. the first Killzone Killzone 2 was dope yeah, uh, kills on three. I never touched. <coughs> Wonder I'm if they like touched either. tie the worlds together. Oh man, that horizon! Like, yeah, oh, as in like the events of Killzone lead yeah. into the events of Horizon. All the other way around. Or something. I'd say it's the other way around because isn't, isn't Horizon like the the future? Like everything's gone down and then back up again. Mm. Mm-hmm. Well, the Horizon's a prequel to Killzone. So. Yeah, Hor- Horizon has been oh, sitting damn. in in front of my TV for about a month now. It's, I'm looking every time I put it. I'm like, oh, I want to play that. But then, like, it's normally, normally I, I notice it because I'm putting another game in the console. Like, Shadow of War. I'm like, <laughs> I go put Shadow of War and I'm like, oh, Horizon. Do you just feel real oh, guilty when you're putting another game? Oh, oh yeah. Like, it's Horizon again. I'll get back to you, Alan. And it's going to happen. Like, next week with, like, you know, South Park. We'll be like, South Park. Oh, Horizon. <laughs> this is what your December will be for. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, by then, yeah, we'll have the Frozen Miles by then as well. I'm um, keen we'll reaching as... out to PlayStation Australia about that uh, earlier in the week. Yeah, Looking be great. good. I mean, I'll, I'll buy it either way. So we'll we can stream get a the code. dick out of it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I platinumed Horizon with the thought I'll platinum it, put it away, and then I don't have to think about it till the deal, till the expansion comes out. Is so. the expansion standalone? Have they confirmed that yet? No, you no. do need the base game. Damn. You don't have it. I traded it in. Oh no! Oh, Did you finish it? Yeah, I platinum. Did yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> get I'm this. not an idiot. Get this. <laughs> get, this <laughs> get this ultimate. Just pack. get this ultimate. Oh uh, yeah, I'll just pick out. up a uh, yeah. Pick <coughs> up a theme. If a new job posting by Blizzard is any indication, the studio might be working on a new project related to Overwatch. Mm. According, we haven't had Overwatch news for a while here. Yeah, there was, kinda, a, there was a period where it was like of, five weeks in a row. You're kind of lost interest on Overwatch, didn't we? No, oh, my kid still plays it. According to a listing on the official Blizzard Careers website, the company is looking to hire a general generalist artist intern yes. to quote help create a wide range of assets for an unannounced project. Under the recommended talent section of the job description, it lists knowledge and understanding of the Overwatch universe, suggesting this new project is in some way related to. Overwatch. I'm just wildly guessing it might have something. It might be like a single player game, because everyone loves the lore of Overwatch. Or well, maybe not you. I don't know. The, the lore, the lore of Overwatch and the characters are very, very cool, and they're so recognisable. And you know, the lore is actually quite deep if you dig a bit deeper into it. But it's not displayed in the game at all, except for like little Easter eggs and stuff like that. Easter eggs to their own lore. Um. I think it would benefit greatly from having a really good single player experience. Mm. So how would they do that though? Because like, you know, I'm thinking in the same vein of like Injustice, right? Where they had little moments of each character. Do you think mm. something like that? But then how, what would the overall story be in terms of a single player? Oh, there's a lot of different stories they could do with this. <clears throat> no, no, but I mean like, is it, is oh, how it, would they present is it, it? Is it going to be like, you know, a bunch of fights? Like, or is it like a bunch of multiplayer maps be coming in or is no, it no 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 I think it'll be like, from the ground up you know mm. new levels and all that kind of stuff you know I think like like a, a Call of Duty campaign like a, but pro- Overwatch a proper FPS yeah. campaign you know um, <clears throat> that I would yeah. like to see yeah I, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping that's what that. it is I mean it's obviously gonna be a very long time before we hear anything I have a feeling it's just it. more ca- maybe it's a bit more characters too no I don't think so you don't think so you think they've done all the, the exhaust of their characters no 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 but they've um, they've hired for that before yeah with different requirements ah, these are okay. very different requirements very to, to what they've hired for for the current Overwatch game so yeah you are you are Batman in detective mode right now yeah they're, they're gonna get <coughs> get more cool things I pretend I know my shit <laughs> <laughs> veteran Bioware game designer and senior game director Mike Laidlaw left his position with the company Laidlaw made the public announcement on his personal Twitter account saying, quote, it's time for me to move on. Laidlaw has been with the company for 14 years working on huge Bioware games like Mass Effect and Dragon Age. Quote, it's been an honour to be a part of the Dragon Age team, he said in his statement, no immediate future plans were laid out <clears throat> beyond. Beyond reconnecting with all the amazing games and worlds video games have to offer. In June, another force behind the Mass Effect and Dragon Age franchises, Aaron Flynn left Bioware after 17 years. Uh, the project director on the original Mass Effect, Casey Hudson, took over Bioware's new general manager. A lot of big names, like, booking it from Bioware. That's like, <coughs> when originally when we read, when we covered the first 
a new an announcement that what's his face was leaving. Mm. We're like, oh, this is this isn't a sh- what's this his is, face. This isn't a. I remember what's Aaron his name? Flynn. Aaron Flynn. Thank you. I, mean, I was going to say Casey, but I thought Casey was his replacement. Yeah, Casey was the replacement. Yeah, um, yeah. So Aaron, when he left, we were like, this isn't a, this is not a sign of of what's to come. This is not mm-hmm. a sign of, of Bioware having a problem. It's just some guy that's been there for years. Mm-hmm. And this guy, on also paper, been there for years. It looks like the same thing. He's like, yeah, he's been there for years. He just wants to head out. I'm like, yeah, but that's two big dudes. Mm. Does that mean something going down Bioware? Oh. Anthem Crumlin? Yeah. What does that mean? Hashtag for clickbait? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they just want to keep being in the news. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we need someone to leave. But we, look, we need you to get... We need you're leaving you. soon. Yeah. <laughs> you're old. Leave. <laughs> uh, I don't know what it means for Anthem. I don't know what how involved they were with Anthem's development. Probably not at all. I'm just yeah. Probably not at all. On. You know, who, who knows? But you know, Anthem looks fucking sick. Oh. But, Nothing, you know, but nothing's Bio been said Wears, about it since E3. So it's very Bioware's name just doesn't kind of carry the weight that it mm. used to at the moment. But there's that new... Is it Bioware that's doing Biomutant or am I mixed up? No, I don't believe so. I think I'm mixed up. But yeah, since like Andromeda's really kind of done a bit of damage to the, mm. to yeah, the like name. Yeah, it, it really has. Um, because, well, one, it's it's damaged a once-loved genre... Uh, not genre. A uh, once-loved um, franchise. franchise. franchise uh, and as a result, it's put a sting <laughs> on... A really good well, it's name. the same thing with that. Like the latest Mass Effect, Andromeda was not received well. The last Dragon Age Inquisition was, was again a- average. was average at best. Yeah. I really enjoyed it. I thought Inquisition was a fucking amazing game. But a, lot of people, a lot of people praised Inquisition. Like I remember when Dragon Age One came out, everyone was kind of iffy on it. But they liked it with iffy, and then Dragon Age Two they were iffy as well. Mm. And then three, like, people loved Inquisition. Yeah, but part you know it was mixed. Mix is the word I want. Not average yeah. mixed. Yeah. They're all mixed games, so you know we're, it's a very different Bioware we have in the industry at the moment. And people just want nice the old Republic again, and it's not happening. I don't want it. Do you want it? Nah, I don't care. Nice. Onward and upward to the future. Star Wars isn't the future, I guess. <laughs> no, it's not really. It's a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. It's what happened in the past. So then, who's wow. telling the story? In what era? Are they? <laughs> so who's telling the story from what year? Because if it's a long, long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, it's like away. how I met your mother. We'll never find out. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Then eventually, like Luke will end up with Robin, and it's really confusing. <laughs> The person telling the uh, Star Wars story has the person with the yellow umbrella or whatever. Yeah, and they also have a blue horn and blue milk. It's really weird. <sighs> Last minute. <laughs> 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 Last bit of news heading into our feature topic. EA has addressed feedback from the Star Wars Battlefront 2 beta. Oh, yeah, I played that too, by the way. Good work. Totally forgot. Including issues around loot crates. In a post thanking players for engaging with the beta, EA discusses likely changes that will appear for the full game. One of the most contentious issues in the beta was the use of loot crates, which raised fears the game may be pay to win. EA has attempted to clarify what these crates will do in the full game. Star cards, outfits, emotes, victory poses will all be available in loot crates purchasable purchasable, purchasable with both in-game credits and premium currency. In an effort to balance the potential effort of players buying crates, the most powerful items will not be included in crates. Instead, they will be unlocked via in-game achievements. Additionally, unlocking most weapons and upgrading star cards will only be accessible in accordance with the player's rank, which can only be progressed by playing the game. Loot boxes, eh? So this is very interesting. So there was there's a lot of coverage that came up sort of about Battlefront 2, and I played it for about two hours. It was fine. It's more Battlefront was yeah. fucking stunning it was really cool to play Battle Droids yeah. like cause I love I oddly love episode 1 in like this weird like self-destructive way to so be able to play on Naboo I'm like yeah. uh, but the loot boxes so one of the issues that they're sort of having is you could literally buy them out of the gate and they will give you quite substantial bumps well like apparently from what cool I've seen cooldowns by like 30-40% <laughs> yeah well, ba- from- uh, battle resistance like the big one that's con- most controversial before I'll let you jump in and say Josh is uh, Boba Fett is like there's a special star, a star card you can buy that makes you indestructible when you're jumping. Mm. That's cool. oh no, that's this no, that's not pay to win at all. <laughs> yeah. uh, but I, I've also, <laughs> from what I've seen online too, is that your level is based on your star cards. Yeah. So if you just buy a whole fucking bunch of star cards, you're gonna out level everyone instantly as well. And then you instantly, get access to which is literally star. pay to win. Mm. Because I can pay money and be a higher level than everybody else. Oh, listen, guys, this isn't pay to win. It's just pay to progress quicker than everyone else. <laughs> it's completely different. Yeah, what, what, totally yeah, different name. What we're saying is our game's not worth playing and not worth grinding. So let's just put the money. Winning in. is really dependent on you, but uh, you'll have access to better things. <laughs> <laughs> dependent on you and how much money is in your bank. That's right. It's, it's still skill based. So that leads us into it's skill based, but work skill based, or what your pay is. It's like yeah. you know, <laughs> skill based by your real life profession. <laughs> skill may not be applicable. 
So that leads us into the main topic, which was... Which still doesn't have a name, and it never will. Let's just address that it. it will never have a name. Main topic. Never. There you go. So, the e- ESRB, the Electronics Software Rating Board, has waded into the recent conversation surrounding loot boxes, saying the mechanic does not fulfil its criteria for using gambling as a game descriptor. ESRB does not consider loot boxes to be gambling, a spokesperson for the organisation told IGN. That's it. Very blunt. No, that's a big, big, that's a big equation. <laughs> Stop gambling. Thank you. Uh, decent size quote, but I'll get through it. While there's an element of chance in these mechanics, the player is always guaranteed to receive in-game content, even if the player unfortunately receives something that they don't want. Uh. We think of it as similar principle to collectible card games. Sometimes you'll open a pack and get a brand new holographic card, which you've had your own for a while, but other times you'll end up with a pack of cards that you already have. Should there be any gambling or gaming related mechanics in the game, ESRB assigns one of two content descriptors as part of the rating. Simulated gambling, player can simulate gambling without betting or wagering real cash or currency. And real gambling, player can actually gamble including betting or wagering real cash or currency. If there's any real gambling in a game or app, it will always receive an adults only rating see that's a really interesting definition i never thought of that the whole idea is gambling by definition is you can you the can risk is there nothing. but you can leave but you because you will always get something like mind, mind you most of us garbage but you'll always win something with mm. loot boxes fuck i didn't think of that yeah so yeah it was, huh. it's a hot topic at the moment you know because you know we know jim sterling is very it is fucking gambling whether you want to call it gambling or not it is gambling which it's a very kind of grey thing because, you know, like it, it, you are paying money for chance, which mm. is gambling, but you're always guaranteed to receive something as well. Yeah. So there's no chance of you walking away with nothing unless your game crashes or something <laughs> halfway through opening a loot box. Yeah, so I, I, they... See, by definition, quote unquote, then it, it's not gambling. It's, mm. it's a, uh, the same thing. It's that risk and reward of, yeah, buying trading cards. Like, you know, you know how many fucking caterpies I have when I bought Pac-Man cards? Mm. Like, how many unnecessary fucking star use I had? That's why when you're playing games like <coughs> Magic the Gathering, if you want to build a specific deck, always better for you to buy individual cards from yeah. eBay and card selling sites mm. than to try your luck through booster packs because you'll never get it and you'll spend a fucking fortune. Um, yeah, so I guess for, for me, I still think they are sort of gambling, but they're... It's more like a, I don't even know, I guess it's a lucky dip, really. And, like, that's worse because you're paying this amount of money where what you're getting could be worth more or less. And they, right, there is money lost, but in value, not in physical dollars. Whether it's gambling or not, it's still, like, preys on that same addiction that gambling it does. does. Yes. So, yes. whether it is or not, it still feels like it could be... Well, you look at what the app stores have done, like the the... Apple App Store and the Google Play Store is that any game that has any form of loot boxes and microtransactions has a big warning on there like hey this game sells stuff for real money and I don't believe consoles have to no. have that requirement I, I don't believe now so in moment. China uh, any game that has a loot box uh, the publisher is required to display the odds of receiving any potential item from a loot that's box that's awesome that's cool it, that, it's uh, law that came in in uh, the end of May this mm. year. That's fucking awesome. It's like I really want this skin, and you can. They can go on. They can look and go. I have a three percent chance to get this skin from this loot box, and then they can. It helps you maybe be a bit more informed, or you know, might sway your decision because you might go. I'll buy ten loot boxes for this skin, and go. Oh, something like a two percent chance. Wow, there is a fifty percent chance that the uh, putting all my money on red will come up instead of black. <laughs> <laughs> I know that. Now, whether publishers actually put the actual odds in there or not, it's a different I'm story. Yeah. But I think that'd be legally obligated. There, yeah. And I don't understand why that can't be a thing over in the West as well. Mm. What do you think about that? I, I think I think that would be an incredibly helpful uh, thing because, like that, there I, I do believe there is. We uh, 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 is Tats Lotto? Is there? Do they provide the odds? I'm pretty sure I've seen it at the bottom of an ad once. I don't know. I've never looked at Taps Lotto in my life. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, I'm pretty sure I've sort of seen it out on TV and it's like potential one in bet chance of winning, mm. you know, which is like, which is interesting. Yeah. And I think it's, I think it's important to have to sort of give people that expectation that, you know, this is what it is. I think it helps educate uh, prospective parents who are like, oh, can I buy some of these loot boxes, mum? Mm. No, I don't know what, you know. What's a loot box? Like, what? <laughs> <you're laughs> what? Like, what? See, like, I, I think... Yeah, the the whatever store you're buying a game from should display like the app stores have to 
there are microtransactions, there are loot boxes, there are... You, you can trade real money for items in this game. Yeah. Just to let... One, well, there's a lot of parents out of the loop for starters that mm. don't understand what all of this stuff is. Uh, so I think if China can have all those regulations, if China put their foot down and said, you're not, the game's not fucking coming out yeah. unless you give us the odds. Transparency. Transparency. Yeah. You know, uh, the West just bitches and there's like, no, 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 it's cool, it's fine, whatever. Like, I don't understand why we can't have that service mm. here. It might even benefit some of these companies to put that in as well. So having the percentage of, you know, the likelihood of getting, you know, this mm. red wheel or whatever, this weapon or this exotic skin, mm. maybe if it's, you know, someone's been rolling so many times and not getting the thing they want, oh, okay, it is a rare item. Maybe I'll buy more yeah. stuff to do. Like, yeah. it, might, it might actually benefit them That would actively consider... Also. I would probably so. consider, I'm like, because then, example, PUBG. PUBG has loot boxes but in terms of for your clothes that you wear in the game I was like fuck loot boxes I went to the marketplace and I was like alright what are the ones that I want for my character looks what, yeah. what I want and I'm like alright I'll pay 10 bucks and get the ones I want yeah mm. yeah, exactly you know what I mean and that, that's how I did it so I, I did pay to, I, I did engage in that microtransaction no but it's fine like, because it's I got totally what I totally fine but, you got what you they, want. but they also told me like the re- depending on how much it costs it shows you the rarity of what it is like there's a jacket in it's like six thousand dollars on steam yeah. it's steam marketplace and it's always some fucking insane like, who the hell but like nine out of ten times loot boxes don't interest me in the slightest yeah. i understand like they are a blight on the gaming but i don't engage with them well, for see, that reason I, because this all really started from Overwatch. Yeah. Because yeah? Overwatch really kicked off this thing. But I think out of all the games recently that it f- have them, like Shadow of War, uh, Assassin's Creed will probably have them, NBA, Forza, Forza yeah. uh, yep. Overwatch actually does it the best. I mean, it, it doesn't... To me, Overwatch's loot boxes, whether you think about them, whether you like them or not, don't really seem that predatory. Because you get one... You normally get one every time you play. Like, they're giving them out for free. you got ways to get multiple a week for nothing. And they are legit just... A skin, and but you also mm. can get currency to buy this from the loot boxes to mm. buy the exact skin you want at the same time. I don't see Overwatch's loot boxes as predatory at all. Yeah, but I, so I think what Overwatch's problem ish is is that slippery slope, right? Mm. It's the whole idea of hey, we've done it and we've done it okay, and then someone else is like, well, what if we push? Yeah, the, what if we push exactly. it a little bit? Everyone's just and what if we push it. a little bit? What if? And then like, because you know, it's essentially like, yeah, yeah thoughts were like, let's push it. It's just the driver, mm. and then for and then NBA's like, push it. You it, can't customize your character. It's, cus- it's, it's customer character. It's it's character customization. You're like, yeah, but I can't do anything until I buy any. It's just it's just cosmetic. <laughs> That's the problem with NBA and Forza. I think at the moment is that you know there's a lot of these features that they had beforehand in their They're games and that the- are now hidden behind loot boxes. Yeah. So um, even whether it's gambling or not, you like pay for features that you yeah. didn't have to pay for before possibly see that's, that's what I was thinking everyone sort of talks about the, you know the price of games haven't changed right like they have because shit's been taken away and we have to pay more for it now mm. you know and then in conjunction with these gold editions silver editions season it, passes season passes yeah, like yeah, yeah. games are more expensive than they've ever been yeah um, consistently yeah you know and, but like, then there's like you know as we said with EA so like in terms of the of the, the level of escalation like we're going to come to a point where you want the like you know you literally want the ending pay money yeah mm. so i went, reached out <coughs> to the community uh to get their opinions on on what we think We've got a couple of replies here glenn chapman said hey, in regards glenn to chapman, loot boxes, from high school. if rewards spent on loot boxes are random and you can receive duplicates of those rewards i would consider it gambling otherwise it's an optional pay to progress system i think it's okay to have these loot box systems in free to play games or where it's purely cosmetic but paying full price for a triple a game to have a borderline pay to win system disgusts me and i fear the current trend is taking the, the current trend is taking in the industry he's, like, he's got a spot on point there because yeah. there are times where like I think I'm getting cynical towards games just because we're in it so much mm. and then I have moments that I think about this I'm like what the fuck has gaming become Yeah, and I think he's pretty much not on the head there because like it's that trend of like remember there was a period of time when we had online fucking passes in order to mm. play a game online you had to pay 10 bucks or get yeah. a code yeah you know what I mean? And like, and that luckily went away, but I don't see these going away anytime soon. Gaming same. community sorted that out quickly. Yeah. <laughs> and our buddy Joel Grouton says, I don't consider it gambling either. You still get a return for what you paid for. Gambling, I can walk away with absolutely nothing. This is exactly the same kind of risk and reward scenario as buying booster packs for trading card games. I still get cards inside the pack, whether I like what I pulled and feel like it was worth it in the end, is a separate issue. Which is another I think, fair I think point. Joel's also spot yeah. on. Every, every week he's put out the the call for questions from the yeah. community, and every week I go there and I read everyone else's before I go to type something. And Joel writes something like, oh, "Damn you, That's Joel. exactly what I was." You nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> but 
loot boxes as a whole, like, just to close this little segment off, loot boxes as a whole, I'm not against them. I'm against them when it comes to single player games. Like, Shadow of War, right? Shadow of Mortal was a single player game. Now, Shadow of War has these boxes, primarily a single player game, but there is a multiplayer function in it now. Also, the true ending is hidden behind the multiplayer, which benefits from buying loot boxes. So, uh, so. But, you know, was the multiplayer put in just to warrant having loot boxes in there? Like, was it kind of hand... Like, we don't know. I guess you'll find out soon enough because you're playing it for a bit. But, you know, could you imagine if games like... Let's say The Witcher 4 comes out and it has loot boxes in it. Like, what the fuck is that about? Get, single player games shouldn't have any of it. Uh, Horizon did to some extent with the, um, the digital packs you could get, but they were literally just resources. How I got a couple extra fire arrows and some stuff. So I literally didn't even know they had those. Yeah, exactly. Packs. So I went through the whole game without knowing it because yeah. they didn't put it in your, like, yeah. shove it in They're your just, face. They were so. called resource packs and yeah. you can get some more arrows and traps from them if you really, really need yeah. them. That's a shit thing to pay for, though. <laughs> but yeah, single player games, I just I can never see a circumstance where they should ever be present. Ever. Cosmetic or not. If you're going to make all these cosmetic items, let me find them out in the world and don't make me have a random chance to get them from a box. Multiplayer games, I can kind of get it for cosmetic. Like, like, Overwatch, as shit as loot boxes are, Overwatch, I think, is the only one doing it fairly and, and right, if you can put it under a category. Um, and, you know, in free-to-play games, totally fine. That's exactly what they make their money off. Yeah. It's, it's how they do it. But I would love to see... Uh, take China's example and learn of the odds of uh, make it become a law or whatever and the and the stores to display that hey parents you know your kids probably going to want to fucking buy some loot boxes in this game yep so uh, I totally agree with you no, no reason for single players to have it mm. um, be devastating to have something and especially if, even if like you said even if they are cosmetic like uh, I guess you know, things like Arkham um, the Arkham games that have you know all these different character packs and outfit packs you'd rather just go to the store and go oh, okay cool uh i want to play as nightwing and i want to do the nightwing specific predator challenges i'll just purchase that for five dollars or i'll purchase season pass and get access to all of them i don't want to get a loot box pay for that possibly pay money to open that loot box and then mm. have it randomized I'm like, yeah oh, i've already got the harley quinn <laughs> yeah you know costume packs so yeah. um loot boxes uh i guess yeah they're, they're good for some situations but i'd still prefer if there was an option where you could just outright buy things mm. as well like i play rocket league and they introduce loot boxes after season one um after their first year and they're all cosmetic there's a couple of new cars in there and the only way to purchase uh well you get crates which are the loot boxes for free from playing every now and then they don't come up as frequently as you'd like uh but to open them you have to purchase keys from the playstation store and it's like you know for one key three dollars and ten dollars and up to fifteen dollars and you know and, and then it's completely randomized what you get in the crate and you, sometimes you're getting duplicates um so mm. that's not too bad because it's all cosmetic but uh if something was really interesting was in there that i wanted to get i'd but I, I would just pay for it so, <coughs> yeah i'm the same yeah, i'm getting frustrated I, i've stopped buying rocket league keys now yeah because i've spent so much money <laughs> you know getting different co- items and things and people are, and you can trade between other players on there which is really cool yep um, that's good for your duplicates yeah, yeah that's, that's the credit to the Steam Marketplace if you just yeah. get shit you don't want you to put it on the Steam Marketplace yeah. well it's like um, Persona 5 if you go to the store they have a lot of different costumes and stuff you can yeah. buy and I, I bought a costume I wanted because <clears throat> it wasn't a random box of five different costumes and I hate four of them and I want that one I could just go in there and buy the one costume I wanted which was the Persona 4 outfits because I really like them there are ways to do it right. Yeah. Final thoughts, Ryan. Loot boxes. Is, see, this is this is that danger though. By like making it okay over here, and then that, that it allows that slippery slope for everybody else to to do them. I strongly disagree with the idea of paying money and getting something random. I think that's fucking stupid. Mm. Period. Mm. Like the whole idea is like one thing that's happening now. Loot boxes are sort of becoming a real life thing. If you go to conventions, you go to a lot of stalls. They'll have a fucking Star Wars box and a bunch of random shit. Like you know, loot crate. Uh, Geek fuel, all those fucking boxes that just give you random shit every month. Like, mm. to me, I don't get why that's a, why that's appealing to begin yeah. with. Like, like, I'm not I'm not a big gambler anyway because like I I work at a shitty job that I don't like for my money anyway, so I'm not going to waste that money. 
It's just a gamble whether you kill yourself every day or not. <laughs> yeah, but like that is the gamble is me. Am I going to leave this building today? Like, there's a reason the windows don't open at my workplace. <laughs> Can you imagine putting $5 into a vending machine and then anything comes out? Yeah, like, like, I don't want this apricot yogurt yes, bar. Like, yeah, like, man, I, want, I, re- I, want the- I really want that like Mars bar. Yeah, exactly. Grain waves, fuck. <laughs> you know, like I love grain waves, but I want a Mars bar. <laughs> yeah. Like I will be more, I'm more than like, example, Arkham games, right? I fucking love Batman. So I bought the season pass. I bought the, I guess with Arkham, I think the season pass didn't cover all of them. So I bought the single ones yep. because that's what I like. I like that shit. Like there was a, people like, oh, it's just cosmetic. You included. There was a time <laughs> where that shit wasn't, it was just in the fucking game. Yeah, where exactly. You got 100%. them by simply playing the game. Like granted, you'd have to play more than everybody else to unlock a lot of those things. But if it's like, it's just cosmetic, like, Motherfucker, there was a time where this is wasn't a thing. Rocket League just keeps adding content as well. I played over seven thousand games, so I've played Rocket plenty of hours of Rocket, credits at Rocket League. Rocket League. See, they'll go and here's this new match type for free. Yes, yeah, yeah they do. They that. trickle out free stuff. Yeah, yeah, but so they just added the Fast and the Furious cast, didn't they? Or they are? Yeah, I th- I'm thinking I'm gonna buy one. Um, yeah. I think I'm gonna buy the. Nissan Skyline, the 91 Nissan. See, I, I, see, I, I bought the, the Bat- BBS Batmobile in yeah, me too. Yeah, I brought that one. I brought the DeLorean. So those are cool <laughs> things, but other things that are hidden behind the loot boxes and then you're playing other games and you're saying, oh, that's a cool goal celebration. Oh, that's a cool decal. Ah, oh, but I don't gonna, I'm going to have to roll for it in a box. See, Rand, and have to pay money. Yeah, I'd, r- r- I'd rather see cosmetic stuff. Just let me buy it. Tied to trophies. Like I want that certain outfit. Well, I need to do get that trophy. Oh, that's I'm a all difficult that. trophy to get, but I unlocked that trophy. Like in game, it's an achi- like an achievement in game or whatever. But you get that trophy, you get that costume. Like That's trophy cool. rewards, yeah, that'd be fucking yeah. sick. Score, well, score five. As an example, goals. that yeah. is literally what happens in Stardew Valley, right? The community yeah. center, you have to get X amount of shit to get this one thing at the community center. Like mm. you're getting a reward for investing time and effort into a particular yeah. part of it. And it's also with the hats as well. There's a little hat store in the mm. bottom of the map. Yeah, yeah. Anytime you get any kind of in-game achievement, a new hat's available to you from the store. That's cool. I like that. Yeah. See, like, so for me, the whole like any anytime they're instantly randomized i'm like get the fuck out of here i'll You'll- take the free ones that you earn oh Fine, no, i'll whatever. take the free one i'll be like see that's the thing example uh overwatch right like free loot crate i'm like oh free loot what the fuck i get all this shit for these pl- the characters that i don't play <laughs> And like, and that's no, the no exact one's problem. No one's playing as this character. Quick, uh, get all, get all the uh, part, yeah. parts you, into the loot box. You, you know what they do is they'll unless they're like, hey, here is a Reaper loot cr- loot box. I'm yeah. like, okay, I play Reaper. Fuck yeah, bing. Yeah, and then nice. you could trade it with other people as well. Yeah, possibly. The thing is, like, they they do give you like currency towards buying what you want, but as well, you have to think. You know, every item in a loot box in Overwatch's loot boxes has X amount of percent chance to get it. But every time they add a new character, all those percentages drop. Because they're adding new items in with a yeah. new percentage, right? So yeah, just think about that. You know, an example, you know, this is it. those loot crate loot crate box things that fucking Dylan does with little Ryan is like you can see Dylan open and go, that's fucking really cool. What the hell? And then the rest is all garbage. Mm. And like that's the problem. No, I think that's the appeal. So of now those his house items, is full so. of fucking loot crate garbage. <laughs> yeah. But you're getting like real tangible things from that. Yeah. Like and real the, items, yeah. and that's not, the, not virtual. So that's the thing. It's the same thing, like, you know people yeah. don't value the stuff in loot crates as much mm. in loot boxes I should say because they don't physically hold them so I'll be like I was going to throw 20 bucks in and there's like a bunch of nothing came out yeah. where like if I had if you physically paid 20 bucks and it came to your house and here's four shirts they're all cosmetic <laughs> and <laughs> of course and you're like holy fuck I'm going to put all these shirts yeah so you, you're not actively going to do it because yeah. you, you have to... I'm visit. running out of space. Yeah, like, I don't have enough wardrobe for all these cosmetics. <laughs> Can you imagine if uh, Loot Crate sent you uh, n- next month's Loot Crate and you got a double of something, though? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what am I like, supposed to do oh, with this? Fuck, this Iron Man statue last week. God damn it. <laughs> That's about wraps that shut up. I want to know what everyone else thinks about this. Is yeah, very, comment below, man. It's very uh, contented, contended, hotly contended topic at the moment. Dumb. You know, you go to YouTube and look at all the gamer like news things, and it's all loot boxes and stuff. We've jumped on that bandwagon we're talking about, but I want to know what everyone else thinks about it because I, I don't really come down firmly on it, on any side of the line. I, a, I only work in extremes. Look, they're, they're, here, here. <laughs> they're here. They're here to stay, obviously. Um, but as far as the publishers can push them, I guess that's up to the gaming community as a whole. You know, before we put our foot down and go, no, this is not fucking okay. <laughs> whole. <laughs> Moving on. This is the section where we talk about the games that are coming to you, as the name suggests, coming to the players. 
Sounds, quite a big list. Still this sounds week. sexually charged. There's a lot of weird stuff in here, but there's also quite a few big ones. So what I want to change how we do this because you know I go through it all and then we go back up. Yep. Just stop me if there's one you want to talk about. Okay. Okay. You too, buddy. If there's I was something, do you, that anyway. I'm yeah. so glad you said that. <laughs> Starting it from the top, abyss. Stop. Abyss. <laughs> wow. <laughs> abyss. The Wraiths of Eden. PS4 Digital. Boko Suka Wars Two. PS4 oh, Digital. First one was a game. Chaos Child. PS4 PS Vita Digital. Very Dungeons Three. There. PS4 Digital Retail. LX. PS4 Digital and Retail. GT Sport, PS4, Stop. Digital Stop, collaborate and, and listen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, GT Sport, is, is, this is a huge first party. Yeah. Uh, this is, was it, fuck, who, who does it? Uh, Polyphony. Polyphony. Yeah, so this has been, this was meant to come out in October of last year. Yeah. Like, there was, a, I remember there was a big hype thing about it. Like, there What's was with driving games? Drive Club was supposed to come out and launch it, and it took a year. Yeah, yeah so there, I remember there was going to be a big thing at Movie World. Like, there's going to be a series of tryouts throughout the, throughout the country, and then ending in a big fucking tournament oh, at, really? at wow. Movie World. Um, yes, but like this is... The big line yeah. for it at our EB Expo. Yeah, it looked, it, it looked very pretty. Yep. Not not out, like we haven't reached out because it was not really our, you know, how would we cover it? Because like, I don't fucking care, it's a driving game. So this comes out on the 17th. Yeah, it comes out right? Tuesday, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Tuesday, they actually dropped a demo of it last week on the PlayStation Store for free. Yeah. Uh, did any of you guys get to play no, it? No, did jump in? Yeah, so um, I played it. I was totally keen on this game um, to get it. I've, you know, pre-ordered the steelbook at work. Mm-hmm. Uh, downloaded the um, the demo. Uh, they've got access to uh, like a few of the, you know, how they do all the licensing and just kind of teaching you how to drive. Yep. So they've got, you know, a lot of beginner things there. And then they've got, you know, six other courses in that. Um, yeah, I don't know if I'm going to get it now. Ooh. I know. The demo had the wrong effect. Oh, uh, it, it did. So um, this, is why, this is why people don't release betas anymore. Yeah, right? that's like, right. why, like, why doesn't anyone really release open betas? I'm like, yeah, because they'll be like, eh, that's enough. It might just be me because I suck at driving games. Uh, I Platinum Drive Club and I sunk so many hours into that. And I was, mm. that's why I was so excited for this. Yeah. But um, I guess the more kind of the realistic physics with Gran Turismo, I forgot how... Yeah, like difficult the, yeah, it is. Yeah, Drive yeah, Club yeah. is a little. It's it's semi, but a little arcade. It's got that little bit of arcade, especially like with the drifting and, yeah. and this. I was like crashing and <laughs> counter steer. It's just a corner, <laughs> shouting at it. So, uh, but at least, yeah, yeah. I th- it might still be up there by the time this uh, video airs. So I'll maybe check, check it out in the store. Screen. If not, maybe rent it if, or buy if it. If not, don't. Yeah. <laughs> Hex Card Clash PS4 Digital. The Jackbox Party Pack 4 PS4 yes. Digital. You ever play the Jackbox Party game? Oh, so good. So fun. You, sh- you guys should do a stream of it. It's right. really fun. Up to 16 players. Go to Patreon, patreon.com slash portculture. Pick a stream. Help fund mm. that shit. Megatron Rainfall PSVR. Megaton, Megaton Rainfall PSVR Digital. I just want to read the description of this one. Be- <laughs> become an indestructible interdimensional super being in this first person superhero game and save the Earth from aliens. Oh, fuck. Uh, I always wanted to do that. No Heroes Allowed VR. Hey! PSVR, believe it oh. or not. Real fun. Oh, no. PS4 Digital. Look Hold away, it. Ryan. What does it say? Pull on your boots, fire up your tractor, and cultivate success in a real farm. The most immersive agricultural simulator around. I'll check that out. <laughs> Realms of Arcania, Blade of Destiny, PS4 Digital, Rogue Trooper Redux, PS4 Digital, and Retail. South Park, The Fractured Butthole. I'm going to stop in advance. I was going to let you go. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yes. God, I am stupid keen for this game. Uh, I think it was it was Trey Parker or Matt Stone said in the interview that they'd love to do a South Park FPS at some point. <laughs> well, they did one on 64. They do, I remember yeah, that. They used to like remember on, shooting turkeys yeah, and shit. And like yeah, turkeys and like cow, cow guns and stuff. And yeah. stuff. Yeah. Uh, they said they'd love to return to that at some point. That'd, be awesome. That'd be awesome. Uh, look, South Park Fresh Mud Hole is fantastic. I've played it like, what, four times now? Different events. You've probably seen the whole game. I've you seen, I've seen, animal. I've seen a lot of it. Like every time it's been playable somewhere, I've gone and checked it out. Yeah. Um, yeah, we, we did the Nodulous Rift like a year or so ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah, nothing but fart smelling and uh, the whole EV Expo weekend. It was the yeah, worst. Stuck to my I've mustache. got my little dudes behind me ready to go. <sighs> I've got, I bought some more figures and stuff uh, for, for the stream. Ooh, we'll be streaming pop it. vinyls are dumb. They are, I'm going to buy them. See, pop vinyls are dumb when they don't benefit me. <laughs> <laughs> Look at all these franchises I don't care I'm about. like, oh, who the gives a fuck about this? Oh, why would they make Westworld ones? Oh, South Park. <laughs> 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 Happens every time. But yeah, we will be streaming this uh, come Tuesday, uh, 8 a.m. 8 a.m. Well, fuck, fuck work. Wow. Uh, 8 work is cancelled. Yep. 
keen as shit. Work, if you're seeing this, Ryan was <laughs> sick. Yeah, just in advance, yeah. I'm not coming in. <laughs> Spiral Splatter, PS4, PS Vita, Digital, Summon Night 6, Lost Borders, PS4, PS Vita. WWE 2K18, PS4 Digital. Hold it there. Uh, we, were, we were in talks with 2K. Apparently, we have a review copy coming, so we'll be streaming that this, yes. this week as well. Yes, yes. You, you don't watch it, do you? Josh. WWE. Yes. Josh Bryan. Yes. Daniel Bryan. Daniel Bryan. That's his. He got the beard. Everything. Do, yeah. You're even wearing the. You know, that you meme has got that coloured shirt. Yeah. I reckon we can get you a wig. We'll dress up like that dude. He's got a beard too. Seth Rollins. Yeah. Dude's jacked. Yeah. His dick's on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Really? Is, yeah, is, 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 is a good dick? Uh, yeah, it's probably average. <laughs> just, just describe good dick, Ryan. It's from a weird, it's from give, us, yeah. give us your best description of good dick in 30 seconds. I'm going to get me some good dick. I <laughs> was more learning about his exploit when he considers a good dick. That's the whole. This last, I think last year WWE had a whole lot of like sex scandals. Yeah, yeah like Chris, someone hacked Chris Jericho's Twitter yeah, and took over right, it and yeah. was like releasing nude pics and. Yeah. That's yeah, awesome. But yeah, so we're going to hopefully be streaming that one as well, probably wet on our first weekly. Weekly Wednesday. Weekly Wednesday streams. Yeah. Um, yeah, we'll, be, we'll make you, we'll make me. The obviously, cartoon versions of ourselves. You'll be this tall. I'll be, I'll be like this wide. <laughs> yeah. 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 I want to see you guys enter the Royal Rumble at one and two and work together <laughs> to get to 29 well, and apparently, 30. Apparently, there's awesome. a uh, multiplayer tag team career mode. It's going to yeah. be awesome. Oh, wow. That's it. That's the final game for the week next week. Fuck yeah. Pretty decent week next week, actually. Great week. Oh, you guys talk about yourselves. See whether you have any questions. I didn't check. Good diversity. Talk to myself. I don't think we do actually. You go what from from my status? What's your pick? No, no, from the website. It's definitely South Park. Oh. Or no, I'm not too fast on South Park. I won't, yeah. be picking, I won't be picking it up. What? On release. You just you've just watched three seasons of the goddamn show and you have no interest in it. I'm not saying I have no interest in it. I have no interest in paying for it at the moment. Yeah, that's right. Um, excited for WWE. Yeah. No, there. I I don't watch it much anymore or at all. Really. So scroll down. I think the uh, the puzzle game, the S one. This. I'm big into puzzle games. I love The Witness. Uh, anything okay. like that. Uh, where are we? Under yeah, Spiral Splatter. Spiral Splatter. Here we go. Brain bending arcade puzzle game that will push your hand eye coordination to the limit with non stop mind boggling puzzles. If this is right in my uh, my wheelhouse. If this is cheap enough, I'll pick this up. <laughs> How the, sad am I? On the Vita or the PS4? Oh, PS4. I don't even know where my Vita is. <laughs> oh, yeah, you know, said that. Somewhere. Yeah, but like I'm, we don't have any questions. No, it's just like, hey, it's like hey, there's a farming game. Like, yeah, I'll check it out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like we're in the Puzzle same game. There. Puzzle game. Ooh, like farming. That's, That's the show. Game. Anyways, yeah. Thanks for coming on, buddy. And no worries. Spending time before you're marrying. Look, it was uh, it was a good drive. Come down and see some of the, uh, the the lovely scenery that. Uh, so the, the fucking that weird gonna, smell that wherever. How long has. are you down in in Geelong or down the area for? Uh, I am leaving Wednesday. So have in you done, two days. Have you ever done the Great Ocean Road? No, I haven't. And it was something that we were debating as well. We're just not uh, sure because we need a hire car and everything. Uh, and how okay. expensive it's going to be. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing. Um, yeah. I hi- highly recommend if you get a yeah. chance. Mm. But we we've been to Men- Melbourne like four or five times. Go see so. the four four and a half apostles. Yeah, the four and a half <laughs> apostles. <laughs> Quick before they're all gone. <laughs> you pull up just as the last one's just like. No. <laughs> <laughs> Quick, take a photo. <laughs> <laughs> We're just. Uh, I mean, I'm here down in Geelong looking at the apostle. <laughs> <laughs> I'm live here where one poor apostle is standing. And it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> if you like that PlayStation conversation, you can join in many more every Monday morning at 9 a.m. on YouTube, iTunes, and other podcast services. How do you join the conversation? It's simple. Head over to www.thepopculturist.com slash questions. Give us your questions, thoughts, and suggestions for the show. What's that? A week is too long between talking PlayStation. We've got you covered. Head over to Fate. Join us. No, no, wait, because I've changed it. Join us on Facebook. Join us on Discord. Join us on Patreon. Join us. And let's be PS friends. All the links for that in the video description below. Uh, buddy, where are we finding you? Uh, you can find me on Twitter uh, at BuddyWatson12. That's probably where I'm trying to be most active. Um, I'm also on Facebook at Buddy Watson. Um, if you if that's where you prefer. Uh, I do a uh, pop culture podcast called Review Culture right here. There, there it is. Oh. Um, we're on a bit of a hiatus at the moment, but uh, every time there's like a big release with a movie or something, uh, we generally pop up. So I think our next episode will be on Blade Runner 2049. 
and uh, Stranger Things season two. So and do some, uh, do some good music ones as well. Music ones as well. Yeah, every now and then we'll do an album review or focus on something. So mm-hmm. every episode we kind of discuss what we've been playing and listening to. What, and was, watching, it three, was it so. a three point check? A three point check. That's right. What have you been watching, playing, and listening to? Fucking awesome! I love, um, I love so. the idea of the three point check. It's very very clever. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so yeah, that's really cool. That's something we do each week. Uh, you can find us on Facebook at Review Culture, Instagram, uh, and also on iTunes uh, and the soon to be defunct SoundCloud. <laughs> S- stay together, uh, SoundCloud. Cloud, we really need you. It was such a big you, thing at some you, you're point. Holding, you're holding us together. I don't want to make a website because, you know, SoundCloud's easy. Just stick together. I can make websi- websites yeah. now. Fun well, back. there you go. Um, and also on iTunes as an audio podcast and all good podcast services and even the bad ones. <laughs> even the poop ones. And even <laughs> they will take us. <laughs> please please listen to us. Yeah, that's right. Please <laughs> listen. Review culture. <laughs> Anyways, I'm Ryan Betson. I'm Josh Saunders. I'm Buddy Watson. And that was for the players. <laughs> <laughs>